Hello, this is uh, Nojo Pro with a video today. In this video, I am going to be showing you how to take apart a PlayStation 4 controller. Um, I put this one, I modified it all nice, but um, dollars to donuts, the thing is broke. So, I'm going to take it apart. I already took it apart four times. It's definitely not a defect in how I put it together, so got to put it back together to its old self. Take it back. Fix that problem. Either way, to take it apart, first you get started with the screws. Uh, there are four of them. There will be a screw. Let's see. There. There. Right there. And right there. It's a good idea that you might want to put something over them if you're a super serious gamer. And the reason is, there is a issue with the PS4 controllers that a lot of people know. And they know it well. I'm going to unscrew the screws right now while I tell you, is the uh, screws tend to get very sweaty and they corrode themselves. And to prevent that from happening, just cover up the screws. I, I suggest you do that. I'm not a super major gamer and I've never killed a controller or used a controller to its death. I have a lot of PS4 controllers. I just rotate which one I use. So I don't really care. But really is my favorite controllers. Xbox One, you gotta, you know, change the batteries and just not. I used to like Xbox a lot more than PlayStation. I don't. So basically, you just unscrew the screws, and um, eventually they'll be unscrewed. The um, first gaming system we all recognize. If I, then you ask someone on that street, "What's the first gaming console?" The guy will most likely go, "Oh, Atari 2600." Atari 2600 came out in 1977. I mean, 19... Yeah, 1977. Um, where is... No, oh, I dropped my screw. Uh, I'm gonna have to pause the video and look for it. Unbelievable. Alright, I found the screw. Um, the uh, Atari 2600, as I was saying, is not the first gaming system. Uh, it kind of depends on what you consider being the first gaming system. So after you get the screws out, um, you will use a prying tool. Now, you can use a flathead screwdriver, you can use a variety of things. I bought this kit for taking things apart, gaming controllers. Um, comes with T8s, everything you would need to ever take anything apart, pretty much. Um, you use the little prying tool right here. I bought this at Walmart. If anyone wants it, I don't, I think there's a Walmart everywhere. So you put it in right here and you pull it up. Probably not like that, but <laughs> you pull it up until you hear a snap. And you would pull it up right there too until you hear the snap. Unfortunately, I took it apart many times. So this, it's not snapped together as well, which caused it to go apart like that. And basically, once you get it apart, now, you don't have to be extremely careful when you're taking it apart. When I was, I played extremely careful, and it took me maybe two hours to take my first PS4 controller apart. Now, be careful if it's your first time, but you don't want to draw the line. It's not very easy to break a PS4 controller by taking it apart. You would watch, want to watch out for this, where the cable, of course, because I have no idea how to replace one. And I assume if you're watching a YouTube video on how to take apart a PS4 controller, you probably don't know either. Um, then here's the battery. Now, you might want to be careful with this because Sony does have really good batteries. And when you take it apart, it has these loose wires. It just hangs like that. I suggest when you take the controller apart to take the battery out so you don't cause any damage, just grab these two little pieces right here, the two little pieces. Do not pull by the cord. If you do that, you could risk breaking it, depending on how old your PS4 controller is. Cords, as people know, get brittle. So basically, you just pull the cord out, you know, work with it. What I always say, do not get angry. You gotta work with what you got, or it's not gonna go well. Then right here's the little part that holds the battery in. You would take this out. I'm hoping I'm making a better video than last time. And um, once that's out, you're looking at basically the motherboard, the uh, 
things like this. There's different models of PS4 controllers. Um, I should take the other one apart and show you what it looks like. But basically, one of the key differences is right here, where the uh, where the bumper and the uh, little stick are. The, there is a, a piece of plastic that like goes over like that. They adjusted it a little bit. The older models of the PS4 controllers look better, too. And not look better, but they are designed better. Um, I'll show you the difference at the end of the video. Either way, um, so you got it taken apart. Now, do not try to yank the motherboard off because there is a screw right there. And I've never broken a motherboard before, but I assume it's one of those situations that would total the controller. And before you unscrew the screw and take the motherboard off, you got to stop for a second. And there's a ribbit right here. This ribbit cable goes to the... Uh, why can't I think of the name? Um, Trackpad. Yeah, goes to the trackpad. You can call it whatever you want. I call it the trackpad because laptops have it. And it's called the trackpad on the laptops. So you got to unplug the ribbit cable, and as I said last time, you just got to work with it. You can't get mad, and you cannot get frustrated. Sometimes, it doesn't really matter what order you do it in. Just make sure you don't break the ribbit cable. Because, again, you probably don't know how to fix it, and I'm not even sure if that's one of those things that would total the controller if you broke. So unscrew the screw. Maybe the reason why it wasn't working is because I had the screw in too tight. I doubt that. Um, you unscrew the screw and then take out the motherboard. But before you do that, right there, the cord, ribbit cable has a little end on it. And it can get stuck. When it does, you know not to yank at something because it will break. Now, you got it apart. Right here, you got the uh, controller. Um, you know. And um, right here, you happen to have the uh, you know the other part of the controller, and um, joysticks are right here. You pop them off very easily. You just go like that, and they just come off real nice, easy. Apparently, you got to work with it too. You got to work with them, of course, because there's always a way they go in. You got to make sure they're done right. Like always, if you do something wrong, you have to take it apart again, and no one likes that. Uh, right here is the uh, trackpad. Here's the undercarriage. Here's the other one. If you're trying to replace the trackpad on a controller like I did in the last video right here, um, I don't know if you can. I tried, and I wasn't able to, but I managed to get the white piece off. So, if anyone wants to try... Um, there's a little thing right there on the white piece that you just really need to just snap off and get it to come out. Again, you gotta be patient because, as I say, patience is a virtue. Someone that has ADHD knows the value of patience. But you just basically will snap it off and rule of thumb always is you got to work with it. You got to work with it. Um, let's pretend I got it off because I'm not going to spend half an hour working with it. Um, next would come the buttons. And the buttons, I assume, are pretty self explanatory, but just in case. Um, you start. Slack button right here. They'll have little grooves they have to go in, so don't worry about putting the wrong buttons in the wrong spots. And right here, you just take off this little piece of rubber, and then you got these. If you want to just take them out, just go. Unless you're afraid of losing them, you probably should take them out a little more carefully. Um, and right here, the keypad. Only button I haven't taken out yet. You just would pop this piece out, and then same thing. Um, at this point in the video, I'm pretty sure you know your PS4 can... Oh, got uh, the P button. I call it the P button. Um, take this little piece off, and then you take the P button out. Xbox. You tell your mom shut it off. Press the X on the box! How many people actually did on... How many people actually are like, oh, that's how you shut it off. 
I don't know how many people think that, but Xbox, I like them all. I got all the flagship systems, so you know why not. I, I didn't ever say what the first gaming console was. Either way, I got my PS4 controller fully taken apart. I've got all the components right here. I got buttons. Uh, show you all. I got the components. I can't really get a good picture of them because I have it on selfie because my brother usually records the videos, but I don't have the patience for them right now. Um, so then you just put it back together uh, at this point in the video. If you know what you're doing and you're confident you can put it back together, you can stop it. But since I want to make videos that are better than most, I'm going to show you how to put it together. If you want to know how to put it together, watch this portion of the video. Um, if this is the end for you, goodbye. Have a beautiful day. Um, have a beautiful day. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. Like me. Um, so to put it together, basically do the same thing in reverse. So why don't I start with the first thing, the buttons. So... I'm putting the old buttons in this one. As you know, when I took it apart, it was originally gold buttons. It's because I took it apart and put gold buttons in it. Uh, so basically, at this point, you will put the buttons back in. And if you have any idea what a PS4 controller looks like, like if you're taking it apart, you probably do. You know what button goes where. It makes things easier. It won't let you put the wrong button in the wrong spot. So if you're going to take it apart, oh, I want to have fun. I'll put the Y where the X is. Unfortunately, you cannot do that. And as fun as it may sound, you can't do it. Uh, so I'm putting it back together. I got to look for the buttons because I did take this apart last week. Uh, so you just put the buttons in their spots. And... Um, Taking it, putting together in reverse. Where are the? I'm missing something important. I'm missing the X. Your what is your favorite controller setup? My favorite controller setup would be PlayStation. It used to be Xbox. I got into PlayStation. I never looked back. Funny part is my least favorite electronics company is Sony. They used to make good products. They don't make good products anymore. But. They got PlayStation, so I'm pretty sure they put less money into Sony Entertainment. And once you get that all put together nicely, um, make sure you put the right rubber thing in the right spot, or putting the controller together will be bad. Maybe not bad, but you might try to figure something out. I'm like, oh, why isn't that working? And it snaps into little black things which means once you get that all snapped in the buttons can and will not fall out but the only exception with this setup would be the uh start button and the stop button no not the start button the start button and the share button actually what's it called it's called options but i always call it start and select even though the center pad kind of takes the course for select Either way, after that, you put the uh, the T-pad in. I hear it being called the T-pad a lot, so that's what I call it. If you call it something else, call it something else. Humans have the right to uniquity, the right to individuality. I don't want you to be like Borg, like the Borg. I don't know. You play PlayStation, there's a good chance you watch Star Trek. Uh, I'm not a big Trekkie. But still, you got to watch. I'm an American, so I have to watch TV. It's in my blood. I've been an American for all my life, so. The subject of politics, I'm not too happy with America, but everyone has the right to their own. Uh... Jeez, why is it giving me so much trouble? Again, when you're putting, doing something like this, just work with it. Even though if you get mad about this, I don't think that you're epically going to screw up. Maybe you'll drive a hammer into the PS4 controller. 
And when you drive a hammer into a PS4 controller, it doesn't work out very well. I've never driven a hammer into a PS4 controller, but everyone for their own. And the uh, start button. You just, uh, not the start button, the P button. You just put in little pieces, big hands. I'm going to be 15 next month, so I'm not exactly a little person anymore. So then we'd put that in, and um, after that, you do the start button and the stop button. Make sure. Again, the guides are pretty self-explanatory. Um, I almost put the wrong color in. Then I went ahead to take the whole thing apart again. And enraging me is not good. Let's see if I can do this under 20 minutes. Fingers crossed I can get it together in 4 minutes. Or at least I am able to get half of it together. So basically this whole top is assembled. You flip it, the start and select button will fall out. But other than that, that's basically assembled. Um, last thing is the trackpad, which you just would put in. And now the whole top of the controller is nicely assembled. So next part you'd be looking at would be this side of the controller. As you know, thumb things and stuff, they just pop off, snap off, snap on, snap off, snap on. Nothing complicating about that, right? Uh, if you're buying buttons, don't expect them to work very well. Uh, because, well, because, I don't know, just don't get mad at your PS4 controller. As you all know, PS5 is coming out soon, so this controller is going to be obsolete. I collect Xbox 360 controllers because it's aftermarket. You need something to collect, you know. Um, my next video will probably be taking apart a 360 controller. Either way, when you get to this point, you need to put the uh, triggers on. Now, a nice little rule of thumb is that you put the right one on the right side because that actually, I think, is possible to make that mistake. But L2, you know, put on the left side. And you all know what it stands for, L2, left. Left, 2 left button number two and i don't know if you knew this a little rule of thumb because my dad when he got into video games had no idea that game would i don't know if playstation 4 games even say this but i know they do on the ps2 they'll say l3 and r3 i don't know if you all know but l3 unless that's my right side and that's r3 and no this is r3 l3 and um when you're at that point, you're pretty much ready to assemble the top half. This part. And this part will become married. Now, as I said, a little rule of thumb, work with it. You work with it, it will work with you. My teacher says that a lot. And um, right now, you will... Make sure you get the ribbit cable through, because if you don't, square one comes, you have to take it apart again. Uh, you might not be able to see me get the ribbit cable through, but just got to work with it, as I say. Eventually, you'll get it to work. And I'm not saying eventually, like, it'll take less than 10 minutes. I'm saying eventually, like, it will take as long as it takes. Eventually, it will work. It's not like it's... PlayStation didn't intentionally make their controllers so that when you take them apart, it pisses you off. No, they intentionally made it so when you buy replacement parts, it pisses you off. Except joysticks. I mean, they're pretty free-ruled, so... They're pretty, you know, this joystick goes there. Pretty reasonable. But um, once you get that part together, you will wind up... So Screwing on, let me just adjust the position. Hopefully I can do that without knocking my phone over. Nope, I cannot do that. 
So then basically you put the screw in right here. It'll feel a little floppy at first and you'll be like, oh, this ain't gonna work very well. But honestly, the design is really well thought out. So the screw actually would work. And little rule, do not drop the screw into the thing because if you wind up doing that, you'll have to take the whole thing apart again. I was thinking about a PS3 and I was putting it back together. I had to disassemble the entire thing to get to the screw. Even then, I could barely get the screw. So, little rule of thumb, um, don't touch the screw. So, now you got that, you would want to put in the little black top thing. And it usually just snaps in, but... If you've taken apart the controller more than once, it gets used to it being pulled apart, and the plastic becomes a little less stable. And after that would be the battery. Now, the question that goes out there is, who makes Sony's batteries? Who makes the PS4 controller batteries? Some PS3 controllers have Toshiba batteries in it. Uh, some people believe that they outsource everything. Now, the battery is made in China. but It's made by Sony. And if you've noticed, I'm wearing an Xbox shirt. It's because I can't find my PS4 shirt, my PlayStation shirt. It's a cool shirt, too. It's a gray shirt. It's got letters on it. Awesome shirt. Next, when you're putting it back together. Now, a um, little thing is, when you put it back together, there will all there will be a little hole between those two buttons. Don't worry. It's part of the controller. The part is there. There we go. Uh, right here, there's a little black pong in the middle, and it works. So, when you're putting this together, make sure you get the ribbit cable in, because this ribbit cable connects to the most important part of your PS4 controller, where the charging port would be. And, I don't know about you, but I like having a PS4 controller you can charge, because it's just nice. Because the battery is really good. The battery easily lasts me about two days of gameplay. I don't know how heavy you use it. I don't know if the battery ever wears out. I don't know if it ever dies. I have so many PS4 controllers that I'll never know because I don't game enough to kill a PS4 controller. Now, I'm pretty sure some people have gone through lots of PS4 controllers gaming. Either way, right there. Make sure you get that piece in. Make sure you get those because the uh, things, these can move a little bit. And you just basically just snap the controller together. And once you get it like that, you hear a little click. No, no, the controller's together. The screws are for support, of course, but it can hold itself pretty well without screws. That doesn't mean you just throw the screws away and have a good day, though, of course. You gotta put them back in. Because I have a uh, very rare controller I found. Very rare. Uh, blue crystal blue ps4 controller if anyone's so like into ps4 controllers they'll know crystal blue is easily a hundred dollar controller used i i believe but the one i have has the corroded screws as i said in the beginning of the video that I'd have um sweated out and it's unfortunate too because I put these screws in, and I'll show you exactly why the other ones are important. Um, without those screws, this kind of flicks itself on and off. And to me, it gets really annoying after a while. To you, it probably will. I'm not going to speak for the entire universe, though. Uh, so I don't know, PlayStation. Most of the gaming stuff originates in Japan. Nintendo beat out Atari. Which goes to show... Nintendo's still around. They are the oldest and still alive. They're the oldest that's still alive. But, back on the idea, in 1972, the first gaming system really came out. Um... 
You should watch some videos about it if you're interested. Now, the original one's the Magnavox 90. Mag Magnavox. Magnavox, or however you pronounce it. I pronounce Magnavox. I saw it selling Pawn Stars for about 40 bucks, And then I got interested. I found the original like trailer video to it, too. It's cool. It failed. Only 300,000 copies were sold. Population in the United States was more than like 95% of how many. Like, it failed across the board. And another thing I'd like to put on the table, to keep your mind moving, uh, leave in the comment section if you believe it. Did Atari really get killed by the game E.T.? Did E.T. really kill Atari? Because my mom says, oh, I, I played that game. I love that game, E.T. She said it made her mad, but she loved it. The game's easily worth money. If you have it, it is worth a lot of money. Worth 150 bucks. Either way, here's the controller all put together, looking beautiful. Um, I hope you enjoyed my video. Again, slap me a thumbs up. If you slap me a thumbs down, at least have a reason. Don't just do it to make people mad, because... One day you might have to rely on the human race, and I like having a nice human race. Either way, have a, a beautiful day, and I hope you enjoyed this video. See you to the next video.